My name is Benjamin Grant Przicki. I am a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of British Columbia in the Center for Human Evolution, Cognition, and Culture. In the study that I'm heading, we're interested in two different questions. One is, how could it be that humans grew to develop the kinds of socially complex social organizations that we have, so state-level societies? It's, it's relatively new. The other central question is, what religion's role was in the development of these socially complex societies? We recently published a study in Nature where we wanted to test for whether or not certain belief sets contributed to the expansion of pro-social behavior and fairness towards other people. And how that relates to our research question was, given the fact that in socially complex social organizations we regularly interact with all sorts of anonymous people on a daily basis, whereas in traditional societies we really only interacted with, with kin and friendly relations where we're going to engage in cooperative relationships. How did this come to be? It doesn't make much immediate sense from an evolutionary perspective because why would you invest or play fairly towards someone who's never going to cooperate directly down the road? So what our experiment did was measure pro-social fairness and biases in economic behavior, the kinds of cooperation required for sustaining large-scale social organizations. What we expected to find was that when individuals claim their gods care about morality, so how we treat each other, when these gods punish people for breaches of moral behavior, and whether or not these gods know how we behave in all contexts. We predicted that these kinds of gods are optimal for this kind of expanded prosociality, which partly explains why these kinds of religions are all over the world right now. If it is the case that these kinds of moralistic, punitive, and omniscient deities contribute to the expansion of prosociality, that can partly explain how socially complex societies are even feasible, how economic trade networks over vast expanses of time are conceivable. And also it lends itself to explaining why such religions have basically taken over the globe in terms of their uh, ubiquity. There's little evidence now that religion is some special feature. So of course we can come up with all sorts of trade federations that might function as a regulatory system, police, and so on and so forth. So religion isn't necessary for this. But given the fact that religion exploits native psychological predispositions that all people share, it can harness these kinds of effects that we see and serve as a nice way to stabilize and develop the kinds of cooperation that we see in socially complex societies with relatively weak secular institutions. On the flip side, when we see societies with very effective secular institutions for exactly those kinds of things, religiosity tends to dwindle. Scandinavia is a good example of that. So if you were to test this kind of question of whether or not moralistic, punitive, and knowledgeable gods affect prosociality in, let's say, a Western society, well, chances are your sample is going to be affected by Christianity or Islam or Judaism, where the god is prototypically moralistic, punitive, and omniscient. If we really want to harness the global richness that we have out there. We wanted to ask the same questions amongst diverse people to see if that effect is worldwide. We used uh, eight different field sites for this study for a total of about 600 different individuals from these eight different societies. Our eight field sites consisted of Indo-Fijians, Native Fijians, Brazilians in Pescaíro, Southern Siberians from Kazil, Tuva Republic, a site in Mauritius, a site amongst the foraging Hadza of Tanzania, and two sites in Tana, Vanuatu. What we expected to see was that when individuals claim that their moralistic gods punish people for misconduct and know about human thoughts and behaviors, then they're more likely to play fairly in an economic context towards other people they'd never likely interact with on a regular basis. And we tested that using what's called the random allocation game. So what we did was People have to make economic decisions, and it's a rule-based game, so they're supposed to follow the rules. However, the sort of clever aspect of this game is that they can violate these rules and benefit themselves or their local community at the expense of someone else. So what our results show is that, indeed, cross-culturally, individuals who claim their moralistic deities punish people and no more they themselves are more willing or more likely to engage in fair behavior towards people they'd never likely interact with. 